Okay. Um, according to my watch, it's one o'clock. Um, this is my name is Steve Skeena. This is the CS519, the data science course. And um, this lecture, I want to basically go through the you know basic structure of the course, resolve the uh, registration issues and things like that. So I want to welcome you all to Stony Brook, and uh, we will resolve that. Um, so, so this is a course on data science. And um, what, what is data science? Well, it's an emerging field, which means nobody really knows exactly what it is, OK? But um, the way I interpret it, it's a mix of different things. It's a mix of stuff on statistics, things like data, exploratory data analysis, visualization, um, statistical significance, basically statistics and exploratory data analysis. There's part of it that is related to machine learning. You know, you have data, you want to recognize patterns in it. Machine learning is a uh, part of this. And um, another part of it is high performance computing. A lot of what, uh, when people think of data science, they think about uh, big data, they think about scale, they think about operating at the, the Google scale or the Facebook scale. And all of this is kind of combined to generate a subject called data science. Any questions or any things so far? Mm -hmm. Where? Yes. Well, okay. So the question was about Bayesian analysis and stuff like that, and it was about arrogant statisticians, which is maybe a more interesting question. Um, basically, we will, um, you know, we'll be talking in here about, you know, statistics again. Statistics have been stati statistics has been st statisticians and statistics is a much older field than computer science, okay? And they've been thinking about data a lot, and um, you know they have ways of thinking about data, a lot of which was shaped by um, th basically having small st scale statistics. Historically, the classical statistical thing experiment is one where you've done. Uh, you've carefully designed some hypothesis, you've measured a few thousand data points on it or a few hundred or a few dozen, and you now want to learn whether your hypothesis is true or not. And a lot of this kind of material is relevant to studying much bigger data sets, but some of it is less relevant. And there's some techniques for dealing with larger data sets that are you know, outside the stuff statisticians typically um, you know, talk about. So it's, you know, you get a computer scientist and a statistician into a discussion of what is data science, they will come to different conclusions, okay? But, and I'm a computer scientist. But we are going to learn some statistics in here because, again, obviously they know some stuff and there's stuff that uh, is going to be important to know about. Any questions? Yeah. So the question is, is data science a new field or is it an old field? Um, you know, I read... The reason I'm amused by this question a little bit is I got into a fight with a statistician this summer about what, what is data science and where did it come from. And um, they pointed me to a paper that one of their statisticians had written about was 50 years of data science by statisticians. And if you read this, so this was written by a statistician and looking at the whole statistical thing. And when you read this article, which is very interesting, there, there's two ways you could read it. One way to read it is that everything that is data science that we're going to talk about in here was invented by statisticians. And the other way you can read it is that at every step away, some statistician had an idea that is relevant to the kind of stuff we're talking about, and they were shouted down by other statisticians, okay? And that it, it be, never really became a part of a mainstream, okay? And that, uh, you know, that, that there's classical statistics and Anyway, so, so the, the question of whether it's a new field or not is, you know, sort of depends how you define it. But the way I think that it's clearly a new field in that suddenly it's something that computer scientists feel that they need to know about, whereas we couldn't have gotten any of you into a, if we had offered a statistics course three years ago, no one here would have taken it. Okay, so yeah. So somebody to be good in data science, what are the skills that you, that you think a person should have? What should someone be, be good at in data science? Well, but actually, we'll get through that. One, one thing that I, th again, next class, I'm going to talk a lot about, uh, I'm give my real, let's say, introduction. But 
One thing that I think that is important in data science is knowing how to answer questions and have a curiosity about the world, okay? So, I mean, I'll go through the, sh the spiel next class, but I mean, the typical software developer, what program do you write? The one your boss tells you to write, right? Okay, and that, you know, you're given, what, what, what do you do? Here's a specification, you do the specification. What I would say with the data science, as I see it, okay, is a little bit more of somebody comes to you with either a, a, a broader question, what is the best way to do this, or they have this pile of data and say, what can we do with it? And it is a field that rewards being able to ask intelligent questions. It's a field that rewards some general curiosity about the world. And so if you want my biggest advice for what it should be, I think you should read a newspaper. Okay, how many people here read newspapers? I mean, on a daily newspaper, not just a you know, your Facebook feed. I think that knowing a lot about what's going on in the world, okay, all aspects of the world is a valuable thing, okay? I mean, we'll talk about it. You know, right now, what do I expect as prerequisites? I'm expecting that essentially all of you are computer science master's students. That means you should have had a lot of computer science undergrad training, and that is pretty much what I'm assuming is the prerequisite here, okay? But, um, but it... There's a, there's a sense of, of, of being interested in the world that I think is an important thing, okay, as far as, in, in my opinion, for dealing with these things. Any other questions? Okay, good. So why is data science a new field, or why are we starting to talk about it? And I would say that there's, there's like three reasons that I personally feel why this is suddenly a thing. One reason is that there's um, new technology for collecting data. You know, all of you are walking around carrying your own personal sensing devices that are tracking every one of your movements and everything you say and every web page that you hit and everything that you do. And since you're leaving all these trails behind, suddenly there's a lot of data about a lot of interesting things, okay? So that is one thing. The technology has, there's more sensing devices out there, storage costs have dropped, computation costs have dropped. Okay, suddenly you can do things on a much larger scale than you used to do. Another thing that kind of made data science sort of start to emerge was that there started to be role models, I would say, in the popular culture. How many of you here know who Nate Silver is? Okay, Nate Silver is uh, a guy who runs a website called, um, there you go, okay. Uh, Nate Silver is a guy who runs a, uh, a website called 538 that was, became very famous over the last couple of presidential elections by analyzing polling data and coming up with very, very accurate forecasts of what, um, who was going to win every state in the United States and how the election was going to go. And, um, you know, he became a, 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 a role model. How many people saw Brad Pitt in Moneyball movie? Okay, this is a movie about a data, you know, essentially, it depends what you say it's about, but basically it's about a baseball team that decides to get much better by analyzing data more carefully. And uh, this became a whole uh, thing in the, in the world. You know, um, hedge funds are very important these days, the financial hedge funds, and a lot of them work very much on a data-intensive in, in, intensive basis. Um, how many people have ever heard of Renaissance technologies? Relatively few, but this is interesting. This is one of the most successful hedge funds in the world that came out of the math department here at Stony Brook. Okay, a lot of things on campus have been donated by this guy, Jim Simons, who was the guy who founded this hedge fund. And, you know, exactly what they do, you know, is, is somewhat of a mystery, but the presumption is that they, they, they analyze large amounts of, of input data and they look for patterns. And kind of there's a lot of this in the ethos that uh, it suddenly became a very exciting thing. And that's kind of why data science emerged. But data not, science is not, I mean, data is not a new thing to computing. Um, this is a graph that I got from a website called uh, Google Ngrams, okay, which is an amazing thing. Google has scanned millions of, of books. You know, they took it, they scanned something like about 20% of all books ever published. And what they did was they took a look based on every book. Um, they, they broke it down into short phrases. And they kept track of how many times was it talked about every year. 
So you can start to see the rise and fall of different patterns in a, an annual time series of any short phrase that you can type in there. So if you type in Stephen Skeena, you'll see there was no Stephen Skeena until he, you know, he emerged in a minor way in the you know, late, late 80s, early 90s. And then maybe there were a little bit more references and you know, so on. Okay? This is showing what are four different names for com the computing field over the years. You guys are all studying, I believe, computer science. And about the, if you look at this, it shows that in the mid-60s is when the word computer science sort of emerged. And you know, reached a peak probably around 1990. That was when everybody was sure this is what the field was called. But in parallel, there's emerged of something called information technology, okay, which is a little bit of a, you know, we can maybe think of it maybe a more applied, more, you know, uh, you can see how that emerged. But when I was growing up, the field of computing was called data processing, okay? When you had, you know, you've seen these movies with the spinning magnetic tapes and stuff like that. The people then were doing data processing, and that's because the data was at the forefront there, not the computing. Okay, and you can see the rise and fall of that kind of a term in this kind of analysis of millions of books. Okay, any questions about it? So data has always been a part of computing, but it's always been a second-class citizen to algorithms. And now, in 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 the world of today, you know. The, the, the data is recognized in many ways as being more important than algorithms, okay? And the question of now that you can collect this data, what can you do with it? Any questions? Okay, good. So what is my experience? Why do, what drives what I think of as data science? Um, over the years, again, I've worked a lot with um, people in biology, okay, and so the social sciences. They have questions that, you know, there's a lot of sequence data, there's a lot of data about interactions of people and, and, and all kinds of different data start to become interesting to analyze it and to think a little bit from their application, what, what might you learn from it. Um, I've written a couple of books that are kind of data related. In the first one, this thing called Calculated Bets, we built a gambling system for betting on a sport called high lie. The sport is not that important, but it is, what is important was that we did things like scrape, scrape web pages and gather data and build models. And a lot of what I think data science is is about building models, take getting data and building models from it. Um, I've been involved with a couple of startup companies that uh, worked by doing large-scale analysis of news feeds, text feeds, things like social media, things like mail, things like that, and trying to extract meaning from that. And so these are the kind of things, I, I, I wrote a book on ranking historical figures by analyzing all of Wikipedia. These are the kind of things that kind of drive <coughs> what I consider to be data science. Any questions about that? Okay. Now, um, the textbook for in here is going to be this. I am writing a book called the Data Science Design Manual, and you people will be the first people in the world to cast eyes on this book, okay? Um, it's still a rough manuscript. Um, it is, uh, my hope is it will be published in August 2017. That is the vision. And um, what you are to do is to go to the UPS store in campus, uh, in the basement of the Melville Library. So we are here. The Melville Library, if I didn't know better, is out there. Uh, I think it's, uh, which way? It's that way. It's that way, okay? So you go in there in the basement of it. There is the UPS score, store. And go into them and say, I would like to get the um, textbook for CSE 519 or data science or perhaps Skeena's class. One of these things will be the magic word. And if you say that and you pay uh, at something like $25, you will get a, manu a manuscript like this. Okay, And this is what we're going to use as the textbook in here. The first, I would say, nine chapters are relatively clean. The last three chapters are less clean. But, you know, but I'm marching along on that, and uh, we will see what happens. I will appreciate feedback from people about the book, you know, towards you know, later in the semester. In particular, there is room for people to get extra credit by um, giving me sort of careful, you know, corrections of two chapters in here. Which two chapters depends upon your ID number, the last two digits of your ID number, okay? I don't want to get, it would be dumb for me to get 70 copies of corrections for the first chapter, at which point everybody gets tired. Does everybody see that? 
So instead, what I have done is uh, we're going to take your num ID number congruent mod 12, which is the number of chapters in here, and then that plus that plus six, so you're going to have two chapters equally spaced through the book, is what I'd like to get comments from each of you on. But we will look at that. So for now, get the book, read it, mark it in a highlighter, and uh, be ready for when we discuss how we'll, we'll do, do that, if you're interested. Any questions? Okay. Um, I also include a couple of recommended books. And, uh, you know, the first, as we said, was um, this book called The Signal and the Noise by Nate Silver. This is a very, very good book on building models. Nate, Nate Silver is a wise man. He has a lot of experience building models. And this, I think, is a good, popular introduction to, you know, the issues that come up in it. So if, you know, you, 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 you can read it, I encourage reading it. Um, some of the wisdom is in my book, but, uh, but I think very well of Nate Silver and his book. Um, the other book is a you know, hands-on manual-like thing. This is a book called Python for Data Analysis. We are basically going to be using Python in here uh, as a, our main programming language because it has a lot, it, it seems to be the, the, the primary language for data science in some sense is a generic kind of thing. And um, in particular, uh, I do encourage, if, if you're not familiar with Python or experience with Python, I would certainly recommend the uh, uh, th that book. Any questions about the texts? Okay. Yes. So what do I mean by IPython? IPython, okay, so one thing that we're going to talk about, again, if, well, I'll show you the lecture schedule in here. Um, IPython is something also called Jupyter these days, if any of you are familiar with Jupyter notebooks. It's kind of an environment for mixing Python programs with data, with the running examples, with documentation. That is kind of the right way to do a data science project. So, I mean, again, what did we say here? As a data scientist, you're supposed to provide wisdom to people. Now, how do you provide wisdom? Okay, wisdom is not just a program that somebody runs. It's an analysis that you have done. And to do your analysis, you will have done a mix of writing programs and running programs and producing plots and charts and models and things like that. And you'd like to be able to document everything that you did so that it can be reproduced or corrected or changed. Okay? And um, IPython slash Jupyter is a notebook that enables you to do that. So it's kind of an environment for, for doing that. And uh, it's important to me that people u learn how to use that. OK? Any questions? Yes? Between Python and R. What? Between Python and R, what are the pros and cons? Between Python and R, you know, depends upon what you are. If you are a st statistician, you would have come up saying R is the language to use, OK? Because there is a very deep statistics for all kinds of li statistical analyses, very deep library support. Python is a generic general purpose programming language that has a lot of packages written on it for things like data munging and uh, and you know and machine learning and graphics. So as a generic, you know, here's a raw computer scientist, what do you give them so they can do something? I would say Python is the thing. Okay? That's what we're gonna be using in here. Again, there's several for certain things, if you're really doing deep statistics, R is clearly a good thing. And there's no reason why one sh shouldn't play around with both of them, quite frankly. But uh, in here, we will be dealing with Python. Any questions? OK, good. OK, so what are we going to do this semester? Um, we're going to start out uh, the, the, the basic schedule. And again, I passed out a uh, handout with the lecture schedule on it. So if for some reason, you can't read it from up here. Um, you know, we're going to start off with an introduction, um, preliminaries, you know, what is data science? Uh, <clears throat> you know, let's look at some examples of big data sets and things that we can do with it. Um, pre mathematical preliminaries, what's the zeroth amount of, the lowest amount of math you need to know to do it. Um, starting the third week, for the third week of the semester, my uh, graduate student, Vivek Kulkarni, is going to come in and give two lectures on using Python. Okay, so he will give some hands up, more hands-on thing. In general, we're going to be talking here at a, you know, a bit more theoretical, conceptual, philosophical level, okay? 
as opposed to a coding level, okay? But um, we're going to have a total of three assignments in the beginning part of the semester, okay? And uh, then there's going to be the second half of the semester you'll be working on graduate projects, okay? And we'll talk about that. Um, we have, uh, what you call it? Uh, w once we get back, there's going to be topics about how do you get data, things like data munging, things like uh, crowdsourcing, how do you acquire data. We're going to have a week on talking about some ranking techniques. A lot of one things you do when you have data is you want to score the items by some measure of merit, maybe to help you visualize it, to help you get some insight into it. We're going to look at ranking techniques and scoring techniques for a week. Um, after that, we're going to spend some time talking about real statistics, statistical significance, how do you measure that. Um, what are the primary statistical distributions? Why do we need to know about that? We're then going to spend a week or so on visualization. How do you take a look at data and make a meaningful picture? As computer scientists, I have no doubt everyone here can take data, run it through a program, and produce a picture. I have deep doubts as to how many of you can produce a meaningful picture, something that will show us the data, what it actually means, in ways that highlight what's really worth seeing about it. That takes some experience, that, and we're going to, you know, that takes a little bit of conceptual understanding, some experience. That's what we're going to talk about then. Any questions about the first half of the semester? Second half of the semester, we're going to spend a week on how you build models, how you validate models. Then get into uh, a section on linear algebra, linear regression, logistic regression, these kind of linear, you know, linear algebra-based methods. Um, We'll get into some geometric type of methods that come in data analysis, things like nearest neighbor analysis and clustering. Um, we'll then start talking about machine learning methods towards the end of the course, okay? Giving a quick survey of other, you know, I mean, log linear regression, logistic regression are sort of bread and butter machine learning tech method. But we'll look at some other algorithms in there, maybe touch a bit on uh, deep learning just a little bit before finally talking about, you know, special issues of big data, namely some of the technology associated with scale and hopefully things about social and eth ethical considerations. Any questions about the material? And the final thing I will see you for is we will have a final exam in here. So, uh, you know, you, um, you know uh, to basically review everything that you've learned. Any questions? Okay, good. Um, now, the primary uh, uh, thing in this course is going to be a course project. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, break everybody, you know, you guys will self-organize into teams of typically two, to two, maybe to three people, okay? Uh, each of you will have a particular problem to work on. Many of them are going to involve building models or acquiring data sets. I want these to be fairly independent projects. I mean, I'm going to give you um, some hints in here of what I want to do. Again, we'll, we'll talk about the project uh, proposals. I will probably give out the list of projects in early October, okay? So don't panic about it. But if you guys can come up with an exciting project to do, okay, that involves doing something interesting with data collection and analysis, okay, that isn't something you're recycling from another class, I am willing to listen to, to that in here, okay? Again, a lot of what I think a good data scientist is good at answering, asking questions. And if you can find an interesting thing to do, that will be uh, relevant. If you can't, I will find something for you to do, okay? And we'll talk about that more later on. Any questions? So each group will have to submit a project proposal. They will have to submit a pr midterm progress report, and they will have to submit a final report, and that's what I'll be grading on. Any questions? Yes? Well, it's a lot harder to predict the future than the past, okay? So that's one thing. And so, uh, you know, again, models are typically best used if you can predict, you know, predict something in, something in the future, okay? Now, um, as we will discuss in a few minutes, last time I taught this course, all our models were about predicting future events, okay? And there is something wholesome about predicting future events on projects because one thing that computer scientists are very good at is taking past data 
overtraining a model to, to fit it ridiculously well, and now saying, wow, I understand this, okay, without having the ability to make any useful predictions in the future because it's overtrained and everything like that. Overtraining is a big problem. One way to guard against overtraining is to evaluate out of sample data, ideally data you didn't know about at the time that you were building your model. So predicting future events is a great thing, okay, for keeping you honest and exposing the limitations of your model, okay? So, but, but we will see, again, the uh, exact nature of the projects we will, we will we'll figure out starting in early October. Any questions? Okay, and as I said, the grading here, 30% will be on the final exam. What it is going to be on the final exam? Well, I'm going to tell you that, it, that I have rudimentary homework exercises, exercises in the book. And my vision now is that the final exam will be made up largely or exclusively from problems from there. So one way to start studying and to make sure that you're, you're learning something or dealing with something is to show up for, uh, you know, is to, is to, to review those, th those and try to come up with reasonable answers for them. Any questions about that? Okay. And uh, there's going to be uh, three small homework assignments before the project, and that's what the balance of the grade is going to be. Any questions? Okay. So um, one thing that's kind of amusing as a product of the last time I taught this course, okay, two, I taught, two years ago I taught a preliminary version of this course. And we did the project in a different way, okay. I had every group predict future events. I gave them a challenge, one of a, 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 a specific challenge to predict something in the future. Who was the next celebrity to die? Who was going to win Miss America? Who was going to uh, win... Uh, win the Super Bowl, things like this. And I gave each group was assigned to build a model for doing this. And uh, we gave each group a camera and uh, wanted them to document their model building process. Okay, and we've edited this, okay, to form, f fill, create a series of programs which we call the Quant Shop. Now, um, the uh, Eight episodes we have the film for are over here, one for each one of the challenges. And if you go to www.quantrop.com, you can now watch these eight episodes. Homework one will involve watching some of these episodes, so I want you guys to start uh, start thinking about it. Now, um, Dini, I want to say that, that, that how many of you ever heard of the, the, the phrase, uh, make a silk's purse from a sow's ear? Has anybody ever heard this? I don't know if this is a popular phrase in India, but somehow I doubt it. What does it mean? I'm thinking not, but I think it means to turn something bad into something good. Turn something bad into something good. Now, just imagine for yourself what it is like to take teams of students like yourselves and film you, okay, and have you produce all this raw film footage, okay, trying to be TV stars and stuff like that. That is the sow's ear, okay? Dini, okay, over here, was the editor who turned this into as close as is possible to a silk purse. So I want a round of applause for Dini for this. Okay, so this was this was an incredible amount of work. Okay, now so these again, if I'm watchable for half an hour here, these shows should be watchable for half an hour. Okay, in Can the private. Tell you though, you did not want to be in the ghoul pool because almost all of them are dead by now. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so if you look at the uh, list of... list to be on. Yeah, so we had, again, the, the Gulpo was the challenge to predict which celebrity was next to die. Um, and so what I am hoping to come out here was that these will give you some kind of an idea of what kind of, pro of stumbling blocks... Hopefully it's fun, first of all. Second, you will hopefully get some idea of what kind of stumbling blocks people tripped into. Because, again, you know, you have students start trying to do these models. These students were not wildly unlike you. Okay, many of them fall into certain obvious traps that get emerged when you start looking at them and stuff like this. So I think that there is a certain level of experience that comes from, um, and, uh, from, from looking at what these people do from a somewhat critical eye. Okay, the other thing that is true is that throughout the semester, we're going to try to use these as motivating examples. So I might very well, when we talk about uh, data collection, I might flash up these projects and say, 
okay, where would the, might we get data for a problem like this? So I think having a vocabulary of what these problem projects are and seeing what people did should be fun. Okay, yeah. I just uh, was thinking, is anybody gonna do anything with the elections? Because you have Nate Silver introduced and we have one of the craziest elections in right. the United States of America ever in history, in my knowledge, and I've covered both yeah. the television producer. Um, and it would be fun sort of to do some kind of data project on your own and see how you match up against Nate Silver predictions yeah, and I, his algorithms. Yeah. Um, there, there, well, there is one homework assignment. We haven't decided exactly what it will be. So perhaps we may, you know, if we get inspired, maybe we'll deal with that. I do encourage people to read something like the website 538, which is Nate Wilf Silver's website, just to see, you know, some of the stuff that he's doing there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, part of the thing is that the projects in here are not going to go out till the cycle is a little different than last year. The projects won't go out till uh, October, so there isn't much room for you guys to do something before the semester starts. Okay? And so I think that. Uh, your ability to put Nate Silver out of business this time is limited, but but hopefully we can find other things. Any questions? Okay, good. Now, um, the other thing is we have noticed is that there are many people standing. Now, um, this room over there, there is a sign on that room over there with a number on it. What does that number say on it? 60. That is the number of seats that the fire department has said people can sit in here. My understanding is that there is one chair for all six, for, there are 60 chairs in here, okay? Which means that, it doesn't mean that the people sitting down have the spots, okay? But that we, that, that, that I can only ha accommodate that many people. Now my story is that I have registered um, that the 50 slots have, as I understand, been given out to people in registration so far. That means I've got 10 spots left. Okay, what I'm now going to do is pass out a little questionnaire, and uh, let me start passing this out a little bit, hold on. Uh, let's see, uh, you guys pass it, uh, you guys, let's just keep these things moving around a little bit, here, keep them circulating, you guys pass these around, go around there, I'm going to go some on the other side. What I'm going to want is everybody to fill out one of these sheets. Uh, maybe I'll put it over here, start doing this. Start passing these out. These out. Start passing uh, these out. Go that, that way. And, uh, that way. Well, yeah, I'm done with you. Give another round of applause to Dean here. She was. Okay, good. So, okay, so what do I want from, um, from here? Okay, so last time when I taught this course, uh, I did give a, because I was filming them, I did use, give a screen test to people who were in a similar situation to decide if I wanted them on camera in any way. And I found that was actually kind of a good thing. Okay? I kind of liked the idea of meeting everybody in the class very, very briefly. And um, so what I'm going to do is the following. I am going to, um, I want everybody to fill out this survey. and. Um, it's going to be, fill out the stuff below the top row is, is mine. Um, I want to know that your contact information, I want to know whether you are one of the 50 chosen people who are already in here, who I had no say in getting in here, and uh, that's life. I want to know if you want to register for the course. If you want to audit the course and just come in here, that's wonderful. You, the fire department doesn't need to know about you. But I am limited to 60 people that are allowed to register. I want to know whether you came here, when you, when you came to Stony Brook. Some of you are, have been here for, uh, I'm going to guess, a year. Some of you have been here for, I'm going to guess, about two weeks. Some of you will have been for other periods of time. And I'd like to know what that is. I want to know if you are a master's student or a PhD student. Okay. Um, I want to know uh, if you are in, which department you're in. If you're in computer science, circle computer science. Um, some people here are part of the uh, master's program specialization in data science and engineering. If you are in that program, I want to know about it. Okay, check that. Um, 
Then I want you to give me, I have two little free form questions. One is if you have any interesting experience in data science, okay? For some reason, fill it in in that little block, okay? If there's anything interesting there. And at the end, if there's anything else un very unusual about you, okay? I guess I'd like to know about it at the bottom, okay? So if any of you have been president of India or something like this, I would like to know about that, okay? Any questions about that? Yes? Okay, so now, now you, you've caught me. Uh, basically, the answer is, is not official. Okay, now, there's some people who may have been led into believing, to thinking it was official. Okay, and I want to know whether there's anybody here. The answer should be, if I know the answer, the answer should be that nobody checked that. But if there's some people who, for some reason, thought they were in this thing, I would like to know about that. Okay? So we have, have a, uh, a, a specialization that we, had, at some points, were sort of advertised. Okay? It isn't a real thing, as you have pointed out. Okay? Um, and, you know, but I could imagine there might have been some people who, you know, gave up the chance to be in India, to be president of India, because they were, thought they were in our data science and engineering thing. And so if you really thought you were in it, then I want you to check yes, otherwise I want the answer to be no. And if the answer is going to be yes, I'm going to be grilling you on this. So some of you may say, ah, if I check this, that means he's going to let me in. You better have the story as to why you thought you were in this program. Is that clear? I'm expecting the, everybody to check no. Okay, yes. Okay, the question is when you came to this place, did you think you were being admitted to our data science and engineering thing? Okay, that's what I want to know. Okay? If you didn't know this, then, then you're like everybody else, okay? And again, I'm hoping that we will. It's also a chance some of the people who are registered in here will disappear, a small number. I don't know how many, okay? And it looks like we're, you know, my guess is that, that uh, we, we probably have about a 50-50 chance of people getting in. If I count the number of people standing, looks about like 10 of them, yeah. Okay, if you manage to, when you show me in your screen test, if you manage to extremely irritate me, I may find a way, I may see if there's a legal way for me to get rid of you, but I have no intentions of doing that, unless you guys really do a number on me. Yes? What? Okay, what I am going to do is, I am going to, after we do this, I'm going to go to my office, I'm going to close my door, I'm going to look through these things, see what the situation is, and then um, find 10 people and tell, you know, Kathy Germana, our administrator, that these, these 10 people are the ones I want, okay? And, uh, and recognize I'm making this decision based on very little information. So if I don't pick you, it's not that you're not a nice person or a smart person or anything like that. But either I could have made it all random, or I could do it this way, and this is what I figured I liked doing better. Any questions? Okay, yes. Are there any more survey sheets around? There should be enough in the room. Okay, so figure out how to get them there. Okay, yes. I will be teaching this course. The, uh, first of all, the future is hard to predict. That's part of the whole thing about out of sample and this kind of thing. But my, under, my, my, my vision would be that uh, this will become my, my annual for, fall course, okay? And that, therefore, I am likely to teach it next fall. There is no guarantee. There, you know, all, all these kind of things. But that's kind of my, my vision, okay? We don't assign these things more than a year in advance, so... There's no uh, thing like that. Okay, any other questions? Yes? Well, if you have anything that, that's interesting, this is your chance to tell me. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm kind of curious what is interesting, okay? So, you, you, you know, if there's something interesting that you've done, okay, I, I guess I'm curious about it. Okay, any questions? Okay, and... Uh, 
Okay, so any other, yes, question? Is there, what? Wait, so you're, you want to audit. So, okay, so auditing, as far as I am concerned, the legal status of auditing is that you're sitting in here and listening to me. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody who wants to audit can come on in and sit. And if you take a seat from somebody who comes in late, well, that's fine with me. Okay? Um, so, but there's a legal registration limit I can't work around. Okay, and that's the, uh, the, the 60 number over there. Now, I am hoping, by the way, that all the lectures in here will be uh, videotaped, okay? Somewhere in here, there's supposed to be a camera device. I think that is it, up there. And supposedly, I am being recorded now. If this is true, then we will, um, what you call it, these things will be on the uh, web, you know, on Blackboard, and hopefully I'll have links on the web Okay, and that would help anybody who's interested who doesn't get in. Okay, but or you're free to come in here and audit. Any other questions? Let me just do something else, which is one other final thing, which is I guess I want to go through some of the uh, on the uh, syllabus at the end. Um, most of this is clear. Um, I do want to give you this sort of three legal notices at the end. Um, one is that. Uh, that, that uh, you know, students are supposed to do things on, honestly. There is a uh, policy on academic integrity in here it, at the university. That means no plagiarism. You know, that means no cheating on exams. That means several obvious things. If we catch you doing something dishonest, we will follow through according to the university policy. This should not be a course someone gets caught in. Okay, the stakes are, you know, you know, I mean, it, it seems like it should be a hard thing, okay? Because, you know, you're doing an independent project. Occasionally, I see people's projects so well written, I immediately Google it, and I type the words into Google to find out where you copied it from, okay? So, right, right, yeah, again, but we expect you to do your own work, um, and if we have problems, we will follow up according to the uh, uh, academic dishonesty policy. Any questions? Okay. Um, some t students, this is one that is kind of interesting. Again, the, we have a, a disabled student services or office at the university, which makes, tries to make accommodations for students who have some kind of physical impairment. Um, and this is sometimes a news to people who are coming from overseas. Uh, so I once had a course where I was teaching it where it wasn't clear until midway through the semester that one of my students was deaf, okay? And if you're deaf, there are certain accommodations that can be made for that, okay? And so if for some reason you have some issue, do not be afraid to contact these people. You know, there's a, there's a po process for how you go about doing things. But if you have some learning condition, something that's going to affect your ability to learn or participate, you should definitely take advantage of that. Any questions about that? And the final thing that I would say is that many graduate students do get into pressure, some, some kind of pressure situation, some kind of an excessive stress situation. And um, these can be important things, and people, students can sometimes do terrible things to themselves in the course of this. So uh, do recognize that there's people who will help, okay? And uh, if you find yourself, you know, in some kind of trouble, okay? And, you know, definitely you can talk to me, but talking to me is probably not your best solution. Your best, oh, so again, talk to me is fine. I don't want to discourage that. But there are uh, is staff here that will help deal with that. And so don't be afraid of using them. Any questions? Okay. Any other questions about anything uh, related to the course? Okay.